Well, there are a number of special things about it, but I would say probably the most important uh, to me is that it is in another galaxy. So it has extended the reach of our searches for planets by a factor of more than a thousand. The other planets that we know, the so-called exoplanets, are all located within a, a few thousand light years of Earth, whereas you pointed out, this one is about 28 million light years away. And we were able to do that by implementing a new method. Yeah, tell us a bit more about this method. How did you actually find it? Well, this source, this planet candidate is unique because among the ones we know because it orbits an X-ray binary. Uh, an X-ray binary is a system of two stars, one of which is either a neutron star or black hole, and that compact stellar remnant is ripping material from its companion. As the material falls down toward the compact remnant, it gains tremendous amounts of energy and begins to emit at X-ray wavelengths. That's why we call them X-ray binaries. Okay. Now, it turns out that the region emitting X-rays is very small, planet sized. So we realized in 2018 in, in a paper that Nia Amara led and, and uh, I co-authored, that this small region would be totally eclipsed by the passage of a planet. And so what we did that was special was to search through a great deal of X-ray data from other galaxies to see if we could find examples of what we had predicted. Okay, could this technology be applied to other research, briefly? Well, certainly in terms of planet searches, it can be. It can be used any place where you can detect X-ray sources with enough counts that you can look at the counts as per unit time. So it can be used in other external galaxies, and it can even be used in our own galaxy, where we can now, with this method, find planets that orbit more massive stars than we have able to do so far.